first harvest for our tomato crop. Let's go. She wanted to say something, but she didn't. So she walked away. That's right, walk away. All right, so we're back at it. We had, we had like monsoon rains yesterday, but as you can see, I'll take you through the field. This is gonna be our uh, secret project. We're prepping. Uh, this is uh, one meter rows by 75 centimeter uh, beds, about 30 centimeters high. We had torrential rains, like, like when I say it was raining, it was raining like 12 hours plus. We had a low pressure system come in down here and it, it like totally, uh, it's been messing with my allergies, my eyes and everything, but oh my God, it's been crazy. So we have our rows done. They're looking pretty good. Soil's looking good. I had them condition it. What we did is we did dufos into the ground, uh, another type of uh, humic acid, and then we did some microbes. Uh, it's not bad. It uh, seems like we're gonna do pretty well. The soil's looking really good. I'm only worried about uh, these little things because sometimes they can be acidic and uh, destroy your soil. So I'll have to do things. Now, I did get a nice tool, but I went to calibrate it this morning before I came up here. And uh, yeah, it's not working. So I'm gonna have to test it again. <laughs> I was really excited to shoot it. And of course I forgot my tripod too. So just a nice, uh, afternoon of forgetting everything but we'll go through we got some good sign for our test project we tested uh grow more's nitro cow zinc on our sealy and we did 10 grams of yara's nitro bore and 10 grams of eunuch and these guys these are in the field nothing special no row cover just drip and rain and as you can see look at all these nice chilies even some are starting to turn so what we found in fields past is that, of course, you have this one, but again, we haven't done anything special. So you have twigs that got destroyed, but we, we found in fields past that when you have this heavy rain, you have really weird issues with your plants. We mistook those for uh, being bugs. They aren't bugs. It's your plant's inability to get nutrient from its root system, right? All the way up into the parts. So it'll, 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 kind of look kind of wrinkly and you'll think oh it's mites oh it's whatever it's not mites it's actually just your ability because these haven't had anything and they have more fruit more even size growth than even our bag sealy now of course that could be a number of issues again i'm not a farmer by trade i'm learning that's why i have this youtube page i'm here to teach you what not to do all right here we go this might be mites this is a good one for mite type of thing let's zoom in and make it nice and clear this might be mites this might be what your what your plants look like this is nutrient or inability where it's kind of starting there but again i find that when you have these out in the uh open they kind of get a lot better with the wind that was the other thing i realized is that i missed having a uh leaf blower inside my tomato parts that's why greenhouse 2 is looking kind of weak but overall we have this, we have extra gigantic okra. This is kind of our test plot. I would say we're more of a, a demo farm than a production farm at this stage, but we test a lot of the products that we can get here and we learn since we're not farmers by trade and we can kind of share that knowledge to you guys out in the world. So here's, here's a good example. This is most likely mite more than nutrient. You can see that the one next to it. But what happens is with the wind too, you get a lot of wind and it strengthens your plants and it makes it stronger, hence why you need a leaf blower. It's not just for pollination, but it's actually for strengthening your plant. Kick it around a little bit. I think I've said that in videos past. If you kick your plants around a lot, they will spawn, they'll get strong. Just like if you do a bunch of push-ups, you'll get really good at push-ups. So same thing, same thing with plants. So it's been pretty good, not too bad. Let's go, let's go mosey on over to our nursery. Go check out our harvest. I don't have the tripod, so it's gonna be kind of bouncy around with this vlog. And we'll go take a look at the greenhouses this week. All right, later. All right, on the way to nursery because this is our uh, plants we're gonna be putting in the field. We're gonna kind of see how that is. Now, again, we had just an ungodly amount of rain uh, yesterday, just out of the blue, just 16, 12, 12, 16 hours of just heavy rain. And then now, as you can see, you can hear me crunching through. This is crunchy. This is raining yesterday, so it was a regular soil, and it's crunchy. So now I have to go take a look at our, our 
Sealy and see how they're doing in here. So we started to have some germination. So I, I gotta check on the germination rates because normally your hot peppers, they take a bit to sprout. So we're starting to see some sprouting here. Not what I wanna see though, not at all. Um, we'll have to see what's, what's causing it, but it looks like they're just starting. Now this could be due to a, a lot of things. What, what I think it's due to is they buried the seeds too deep. I didn't do this. Normally I do a lot of my uh, starts myself. At this point, I just didn't have enough time to do it. So I delegated a lot of it. So what I'm seeing right here is I'm seeing seeds just starting to sprout right into here. So we'll give it a little bit more time, but I am starting to see it like there, 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 you can barely see that one, definitely there. So we're starting to, and that's what happens when you plant your seeds too deep, but they are in the right part. So these guys are just gonna take a little bit more time to get bigger. But I don't see any like issues with ants. Ants are kind of one of the big things out here. They attack, we just did our basic cell tray, a 128 tray, and then let everything else go. We didn't do it in the 50 cell because I was hoping that I would get these guys about the first week of March. It looks like it's gonna be a lot longer. Also, um, we're in a shade net house as well, up top, but we haven't had a lot of sun. We've had sun like this, and then rain, and then sun like this, and then rain. So you can see it already starting to build out that way. So we really have a really erratic weather pattern, and our weather pattern has been pushed back about a month, month and a half. So we're just now starting again. Now again, it could be a lot of stuff, but the mixture that we use has been our standard one. I, would, I wouldn't call this a, a failure yet in germination. I think it's just a very slow germination, and I think they probably buried it too deep. Normally, you just want to go double the width of your seed. So this thing is like super tiny, I'm gonna zoom in right there, right there. You wanna go just double that, that length, that's it. So very, very, very little bit. So I bet these guys are just buried. But as you can see, looks like they all started really good. I don't see any signs of cutworm or anything else. You're really worried about cutworm at this stage. So I think they're, they're just buried really deep. So easy to fix, easy to, easy to go through. But it looks like we're starting to get that. And again, the more sun you have, the more warmer temperatures all around, the better your germination. Let's go check out greenhouse two. All right, see up at the top there? We have to do some cleaning. Use some bleach, use some baking soda, and we're gonna pressure wash the top of our greenhouses. That's one of the big issues too. When you have greenhouses, you need to make sure that you're doing a, a yearly or maybe even a, a four times a year would be the best, but sometimes just based on the schedule, you're not gonna do it, but at least once a year, you scrub and pressure wash your greenhouses because at the top, you create this lot, this uh, buildup, and it's just algae, mold, you want to actually make sure that as much sun as possible is getting into your plants. We don't have a big issue with that, but it might be affecting other growth rates. But let's go check it out. Let's go into greenhouse two. All right, let's check out greenhouse two. So I said the weather's been crazy with my allergies like the past like month. So here in greenhouse two, I made a miscue. Uh, the miscue was uh, inside a greenhouse. I didn't notice it with our peppers we've grown inside here and I never, uh, had an issue with tomatoes in the field, but inside your greenhouse, you have to shake your plants and create that wind. So I'm just now starting to see flowering or our plants are just really big and they, they wanna flower out a lot. So what you're supposed to do is just come by and shake your plants. So we had a little bit of miscue on that. The best way to do that, leaf blower, because they are self-pollinating, but you know, it only goes so far. So I'm now starting to see a second set of uh, flowering, but it looks like these actually are setting higher. These are our baby plants. They were like, right, I'll see if I can find a video. So they're just now starting to flower at this point. So I'm not too worried about it at all, but you can see that some of your early ones, they flowered much sooner. And these are the same variety. These are the D-Max or Diamante F1 East West. But other than that, these are your baby ones, right? These are the ones that didn't catch up to our bigger part of the field. And as you can see, tomatoes, they, they can take a bit of fertilizer. So what I've been having the guys do is just go around and shake it. The best way to do this is a leaf blower. Well, where I live, it's not always easy in access to tools. So yeah, there's that. 
So I'm hopefully getting a leaf blower uh, just in time to change crops. I'm working on another project, which will hopefully unveil in a couple of months. But right now these crops look really good. The problem being is your tomatoes are worth like nothing in the marketplace. You gotta be like a market gardener and uh, to make some money around here. And it's very, very tough with that. But overall, I mean, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm not liking the germination. It's, it's one of those things and just trying to figure it out. So it's been working really good. I also learned some better pruning techniques, but some of these worked really good and some turned out pretty nice, but it, it seems like it'd come around, but we really need that leaf blower because like this one right here, this guy is ready to pick. So I just pop it off right there. So nice size is about 20 to 30 grams. This is more already, the market doesn't want this tomato. It already has too much color change. This is good for personal use. The market also doesn't like these on top. So you just pop them right off and then now they don't have that spiky. Also, one of the other things with your tomatoes is they can be used to ripen all their fruit. If you notice, we grow peppers, we grow uh, bananas, we grow lots of other types of fruit. But if you need to ripen it, you use the ability from your tomato to ripen them so not too bad but i definitely think we need a leaf blower in here we need some fans they're looking really good the ground's nice and wet i don't see any soil issues uh some plants are toppling over again we prune them up like we would indeterminate but i'm, I'm not uh disappointed with the amount of flower it's now just making sure <laughs> that they grow one thing that always concerns me as you saw with this one each one of these is a flower cluster itself and then they fell off now, I don't think there's any nutritional issues. I think it's more of they didn't get pollinated, right? See so how they kind of just look very weak right there. Very, very, very weak. I worry about that with these. I can see that I also see a bunch of white fly coming off it. So, you know, there's a lot of that. So again, I'm, I'm still very much learning and how to do a lot of this and I'm juggling lots of crops at the same time and I'm trying to figure out what will stick. Now, the reason I chose a lot of these crops is because they garner the most stable price. And that's very important to make your farm profitable. You can't just grow stuff because you like it. I hope you like eating nothing but tomatoes and sealy because that's all you're gonna get if the market tanks. So right now I think we're in our second set of flower blooms. So I need to get a leaf blower in here to shake them around. But it looks like because we got some wind, I think I should see a lot more uh, pollination on that or it's a miscue on us but like I said one of the big things we do is we really only want to keep four we could change that but really one of one of the big things is you just want to make sure that you're, you're getting it I don't see much to go over in this greenhouse I just want to share some miscues and some things so this is actually way earlier than what it is but it was the first set of uh, flowers but I'm still still learning. No, this isn't a giant cobra or python. This is a reminder to always clean up your farm from irrigation. Otherwise, sometimes people just leave it there and it goes to waste. Don't let that happen to you. All right, let's go. Let's look at some beautiful tomatoes. So we pulled in a first harvest. Looks like it's gonna be about one, uh, three crates uh, right at 70 days. So 65 was on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember which day it was. But one of those days, so about 70 days. Now, these aren't pretty, and my video's passed. We are not growing the prettiest, most awesome plants forever. Cannot sustain that. It is not possible to do it. What we can do is we can manage each crop and then get it to where it's at. So right now we have a start. Now the prettier plant is, but we don't know if this is Joe killing his own plants. Most likely it's me. And when I tell everyone to do something, they might've done it and well, we killed it. But what I am seeing right now is our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth, twelfth, 120 harvest. I have no idea how many we're gonna have, but right now our succession harvest after your first. Your first is always going to be um, questionable, especially when the weather comes in. If we had more sun, these would be a lot bigger and they would be uh, uh, easier to harvest, right? We'd have a, a much bigger yield. Right now they're looking pretty good. You have a little bit of crop damage into that that can be caused by any number of parts. These are the avatar and they are very ribby. Some people like their tomato ribs. These are a ribbier variety versus our diamante that we're growing in our east-west and we've grown before. But what I am seeing is that their 
production level, they set fruit lower on the plant and they are really prolific. Uh, we're still into flowering for other succession harvests, so even at the top and the apex. So they are massive flower producers. Uh, I don't have much with that other than you can see where I tried to willfully kill plants right there. Uh, did really good. That was an uh, issue with uh, dilution of our sprayers. So when I was applying nutrients to it and I was applying also some uh, pest control measures because we want to make sure that we get these guys to harvest. Again, we can all live in hopes and dreams. Hopes and dreams don't pay the bills. They're a good notion, but we got to put food on the table and money in the bank account. So we want to make sure we take care of it. So I, I caused an inadvertent spray mixture. The way I could have fixed it was I could have diluted more with water. But overall, the size has been really good even for those that are affected. Now we're going to work on hopefully reducing any other inputs that we have in our tomatoes, but I'm, I'm really good that we're able to turn this around and salvage it. So if we can pull out 80 to 100 kilos a week for the next 60 to 120 days, which is what I think is a good lifespan for the, enough times at least I can grow some other tomato seedlings and swap these guys out um, and get two to three harvest a year, then we'll, we'll do pretty good. And that's only three rows of 40 meters maybe 45, can't remember exactly, 40, 45 meters of tomato. And this is only 500, this is only 540 plants. Maybe we could have spaced them out a little bit more, but these are technically 18 inches from each other. I know it doesn't, it doesn't look like that, but I promise you that they, they are, they're pretty close. Um, they, maybe they could do a little bit more. The max I could ever fit in here would be about 540, just based on the, the side and whatnot but yeah i think these are pretty good it's a good start definitely when i really thought i killed it and i tried my best to kill it by just being a little overzealous and again gonna make those mistakes i <laughs> just have to live with it and learn from it and then drive on because so many people get discouraged they get downtrodden farming is not easy it's a really tough profession to get into especially when you don't know how to do it so as long as you just maintain a positive attitude <laughs> you know and and just keep going you're gonna fight you're gonna bicker you're gonna see bug this is a good example of let me get a clear image it's a good example of bug damage those are your sucking insects so you're gonna have those you just have to figure out a way around it and keep driving on forward to grow some awesome plants so with that i'm gonna round this up i'm gonna do some stuff it looks like we have some rain moving in so i'm gonna go take some notes uh, under the rain hopefully maybe do some field work because we got other seedlings that I'm ready to start and I need to see when I get the next batch of tomato seedlings for this greenhouse uh, always be mindful of your crop and clean up after yourself you see our rows are nice and clean after our harvest you always want to make sure that you're teaching really good methods of crop preservation because next week you're going to be back in here harvesting again and again and again <laughs> so I just try to do that with that I'll leave you guys for this week. You know, like, subscribe, follow us down below. Leave comments if you want me to answer any questions. I'll see you guys in the next video. What you doing? Harvesting. AKA spiky fruit that you don't really eat that much. <laughs>